Welcome to McCormick Farm and to the McCormick Memorial Plot. This two-acre plot set aside to honor the inventor of the Reaper and his family has been designated both a National Historic Landmark and a Virginia Historic Landmark. This land is owned by Virginia Tech, the land-grant university of Virginia, and is operated by the Virginia Agricultural Experiment Station as the Shenandoah Valley Agricultural Research and Extension Center, one of 13 off-campus centers at Virginia Tech. You are standing where farm mechanization was born. It was in this log building in 1831 that Cyrus H. McCormick, at the age of 22, completed his first grain reaper. That reaper was first demonstrated in the fields of John Steele, owner of Steele's Tavern nearby. A full-sized replica of the first successful mechanical grain reaper is displayed in this museum. Working in the blacksmith shop below, Cyrus was following in his father's footsteps. The elder McCormick, Robert, had long sought the key to a machine that would ease the struggle of harvesting grain. Robert, as early as 1809, the year Cyrus was born, had a partially completed version of a reaping machine. Cyrus inherited his father's inventive mind and, as a very young boy, began tinkering in the blacksmith shop. One of his first efforts was a lightweight wooden cradle attached to the scythe to help ease the work at harvest time. Cyrus continued his work in easing harvest operations using machine power in place of manpower. The amount of grain one man could harvest with the scythes on cradle in a day in the critically short harvest period meant farmers banded together to help each other with the harvest. But more was needed to remove the drudgery of hand harvesting and help in the uncertainty of harvest time. That aid, the reaper, came from the inventive mind of Cyrus McCormick and from the forge of the blacksmith shop on the floor below. While Cyrus had the help of his father's long efforts at building a mechanical reaper, as well as the help of a talented slave blacksmith, the reaper that emerged from this workshop in 1831 was Cyrus's creation. Along the walls of this room are pictures showing how the reaper gained fame and changed the agriculture of that day through its quicker, easier harvesting, which allowed larger fields of grain to feed more people. The inventive genius and business acumen of the McCormick family is self-evident. Cyrus's father, Robert, held several patents for farm implements and did much of the early development of the reaper. Cyrus's brothers, Leander and William, were instrumental in the later buildup and success of the McCormick Reaper Company in Chicago. Another brother, John, and sisters, Amanda and Caroline, and a loving mother, Mary, surely played their parts in Cyrus's life. And yes, there is a black history at McCormick Farm and Steele's Tavern as well. Cyrus's father owned 17 slaves at the time of his death in 1846. The full-sized replica of the first reaper in this room demonstrates how McCormick substituted the cutter bar for the old hand-swung scythe. The cut grain was then laid out in the cradle in the rear with the grain heads all in the same direction. A worker walked alongside to rake off the cut grain so it could be bound into sheaves. In the glass case are models of McCormick machines showing advancements in the development of the reaper, the predecessor to the modern day grain combine. Also in this glass case are models of binders that Cyrus perfected to complete the harvest job, gathering up the cut grain that came from the reaper and mechanically binding the sheaves. In the blacksmith shop below, you will see the forge at which Cyrus McCormick worked and tools of his era, including the anvil believed to be the one he used. Next door is the 200-year-old grist mill, which Cyrus's father, Robert, built to provide his family with meal and flour. One millstone is for corn, the other for wheat or small grain. The mill and this building were restored in the 1930s to be as authentic as possible to the original construction. The water wheel was rebuilt in 1985. A new cedar shake roof was added in 1993, including the museum building where you are now standing and the entire grist mill was stabilized and rehabilitated in 1996 and 97. This latter work is a lasting tribute to the generosity of Mr. Hugh Trumbull Adams and to the dedicated craftspeople over the years who have maintained this historic structure. The other building within this two acre memorial plot was formerly a slave cabin, now renovated into restrooms. 
it is probable, though as yet unresearched, that some of these slaves played a part in the development and production of the early reapers. Thus we may say that Preston, Erasmus, Sam, Dick, Rufus, Amos, Sally, Mary, Fanny, Hannah, and other slaves played their part in the McCormick story as well. Up the hill is the manor home built by Robert McCormick for his family after Cyrus was a young boy. As was characteristic of the times, the McCormick Farm Manor home with broad hallways and eight rooms on two floors has heavy timbers, is made of home-baked bricks on a stone foundation with all of the materials coming from the McCormick land. The house stands today very much as Robert McCormick built it. Near the house is another red brick building used as a schoolroom for farm children with a second floor room over one portion which was sleeping quarters for the manor home maid. It was from this blacksmith shop and workshop that Cyrus McCormick built his first 100 reapers. Then, realizing that the open spaces of the Midwest would soon become the new breadbasket for the nation, he moved to Chicago and opened the first of his factories for manufacturing the McCormick Reaper. Thus, the inventor and businessman founded what was to become the world's largest producer of farm equipment, International Harvester Company. Cyrus and his family retained their ties to the Shenandoah Valley and to the state in which he grew up.